Blah, 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 blah. Oh wait, we're rolling. <laughs> okay. So I did not intend this video to be in total darkness today. Um, it's just what ended up happening. Okay, good. It'll sound better without the ear pods. <clears throat> really good microphone on these, by the way. By the way, Sennheiser, if you want ear pods, Sennheiser's where it's at. Absolutely best sound quality that you can get. If you got like, the Apple AirPods are like $250. These are half the price, or they're at least less, and they're twice the sound quality, believe me. Sennheiser, best headphones too, over the ear, but honestly, these sound almost as good as my fucking $400 pair of headphones, so they're Sennheiser. I wanted to go outside to make this video, but events transpired that uh, dissuaded me, so here we are. I've decided to embrace my loquaciousness and put it to good use and start talking about things in my personal experience and in my life because I have a lot of stories to tell. I have a lot of things that I've been through, a lot of pain. And the reason that I haven't talked about it up until now and I've only been doing my music is because I didn't believe in myself and I did not I was selling myself short basically I discredited my own pain basically in denial in fact there are things that I was in complete denial about that I didn't even I wasn't even aware that was going on yep yeah, okay for example uh I've had a few rape memories that I didn't know existed. In other words, I've been raped several times. <laughs> um, it was only a couple of months ago that in a tsunami of energy, just, it was a Saturday night. I think it was a full moon, but there was just crazy energy going on. And my friend said, hey, you know, maybe you should go out. And I said, nah, I'm gonna stay in. I had this feeling that there's something that needs to happen. I sat down and meditated, even though I felt Woo, like so much energy, I had, to, I had to do something. I just sat down and meditated. All of a sudden, I just saw everything. I saw, I saw the policeman behind me, behind my shoulder. I saw the memory, I got details. I got the things that happened that I didn't realize. I thought that they were just fantasies or something lost from my childhood. You probably can't even see me that good, huh? I didn't realize that this dark, murky, weird fantasy thing, this dreamlike thing that I've seen, you know, every now and then in my twi in the twilight state where you're in between sleep and waking state. I didn't realize that that was a traumatic memory that had been repressed. It literally is in a different part of the brain. It's like you can't access it in normal linear time. It's almost like a dream is how the brain stores it. It's like this weird, murky, murky dark, nebulous area of the brain. Why am I telling you these things? I've decided that I'm going to be a lot more open and express myself rather than always trying to be about channeling or about making music or delivering you these poetic lessons about life. There's a time and a place for all of that and then there's also a time and a place for just real down to earth authentic language without always necessarily trying to have the great perfect words to say. It's it's real talk. And this is kind of what I intended this channel to sort of be about originally, but you know, there's many different avenues and really everything is spiritual. Everything is channeling if you want it to be. If you know how to tap into that place and access it, then it is. But there's also something that just happens when you just speak and you just talk and you share your personal experiences. That is part of being a real authentic spiritual being as well, a spiritual person. That's kind of, that's the realness, the authenticity, and it's vulnerable. But, you know, a lot of people don't practice that. Right now, I don't really have anybody that I can really be that open with. So I've decided I'm going to use this time, this designated time from spirit where... 
I seem to be very alone and I'm going to put this to use and I'm going to see who benefits from it because it's not always when you go out and you try to find the absolute perfect thing that, need, that, that needs to be taught to you. It's not when you go out and find like the, here's ten, a, ten, a checkpoint, a checklist, of these 10 different validated points. You know, on how to spot a narcissist or, uh, you know, how to, how to heal your trauma. It's when somebody lays down their actual anecdotal experience from real direct personal experience. And we make connections. We connect dots just off of one little thing offhand that somebody says. That's usually the most powerful stuff is when somebody's relating or sharing their experiences and then you hear just one little thing and that phrase is what sticks with you it sticks in your mind and you can't can't get it out of your head now or you say something like that to somebody and you don't even realize they come back a week later Josh I can't get what you said out of my head because you said this thing to me and oh really that's the thing you remember <laughs> and it's like that every time you know you give and give and give all this great advice or so you think and then they come back and actually it's like one little comment that you didn't realize that that's what stuck with them because we're all different and we're all unique. We're not the same. And what resonates and gels for one person is not going to be the same for someone else. I feel like this lighting situation is going to be a big problem. <laughs> oh, here. Here, there we go. Now I'm on stage. <laughs> I got the stage light going. Okay, better, right? Yeah. Here we are in my garage. <laughs> this is my studio. <clears throat> I've had a couple like sort of, you know, fancier studios in the past, but this is what we got for now. Why did I cut the video out of my channel? Because someone close to me recommended that they said, hey, you know what, Josh? This poetry video you got, your face is very distracting. <laughs> I would kind of like to hear just the audio. And at first I was a little, but then I went and listened to it. And I listened to it without the video. And I thought, huh, you're right. You're right. There's something about my voice on the mic that is more powerful, audio only. Something happens when you shut the video off and you have to listen. When you close your eyes, something else come, happens. You have to listen with different different eyes, different ears. You're able to glean more of the realness, more of the magic, more of the energy from the audio because there's no video to distract you. The visual world, the visual realm is very distracting. I can vouch for that. <laughs> all the hot women that I see constantly around me all the time are very distracting. <laughs> but the problem is, as a single straight white male in modern America is that a lot of women just do not necessarily have the depth or the creativity or the, you know, the personality that I'm looking for or that, you know, mature creative types are looking for, you know, that is rare in both sexes. I'm not being sexist. I'm just being fucking honest, I'm really being honest here. Beauty is great, but you need to have a lot more depth than that. But, but the issue is, you know, being... Being caught in America is sort of like this trap. You know, as, as a man, I don't think a lot of women understand this. As a man, we have a raging sex drive that's like an inferno. It's like this excruciating, agonist pain that if left to burn for too long, you can lose your mind. <laughs> you will lose your mind. Men lose their mind, and when that happens, you either do you do one of several things. You either snap, and you go jerk off to internet porn and smoke marijuana, or you give up and just mentally deteriorate, and you know, who knows what, right? In very rare, very extreme cases, somebody will, you know, some sociopath will go out and do some horrendous shit, but they would have done that shit anyway. So, you know, you can't, uh, 
trying, uh, I'm picking my words very carefully here because I gotta be YouTube safe about this stuff. I wanna, I wanna talk about this real shit that no one talks about. My day-to-day -day experience being who I am and what I am on this channel. And this is a big part of it, is sexual frustration. If I were in a relationship, I would love to talk about relationships and love and true love, but having had my heart completely shattered recently, well, that was actually eight months ago, but let me tell you, the pain takes a, takes a long, real love, when it's real love, it hurts and it takes a long time to heal. And if you go look at all of my fucking videos over the last eight months, all of them, I could not have possibly said any more about the subject of love and heartbreak. I think there's plenty there to look at. So this is not the video we're going to go into that. I'm sick of talking about it. I'm sick of thinking about it. You know, um, talking about sexual needs now. You know, we'll get into that too. But uh, with, with this channel, with what I want to present moving forward, I've just spent the last eight months in, in absolute agony and heartbreak and healing and really digging into my traumas and healing them. And it's not been easy. I've had to deal with every mental disorder in the book my whole life. I've had to deal with PTSD for so many years, not even realizing what it was. I am triggered nearly daily. I, have, I guess you call it a panic attack, but at this point, I'm so used to it. I'm not locked into my mind anymore. So I'm able to observe it and get through it and realize it's not real. And as a spiritual person, as a sensitive person, as a highly, highly sensitive empath who can feel energies from people without even wanting to, but especially if I tune in to someone, I have learned that extremely sensitive people are actually at the mercy of these mental disorders far more than your average person. And the majority of the time, people in America misdiagnose people who are having a spiritual crisis as having a mental crisis or a mental disorder. And even if it is, the solution to solving mental disorders is not to throw people in a white room and drug them. That is abuse. That is abuse. That is narcissistic abuse. With the system being the narcissist. <laughs> so after all my experiences, okay, so I've been raped, I've been hit, I've been abused, I've been mentally abused, you name it, I've been through it all. I've had women beat me up, I've had actually more women than men beat me up. Um, beating up by men was never an issue um, because, probably because of what happened to me. You know, there's incidences from my young, young childhood I do not remember. I know I'm all over the place, but this is what you get right now. <laughs> and the big one was uh, freshman year in high school. And it was by a police officer. I was raped by a police officer in high school. And I didn't even know. <laughs> For like 20 years, I didn't even realize. Well, longer than that, because I, I told you I only just found out. But whenever. What is time? It explains all the weird unresolved trauma, all the weird triggers, the weird paranoias, the weird panic attack. I didn't know this was PTSD. Nobody told me, nobody diagnosed me. I've never been to a therapist, I've never been to a doctor, yet I've had to confront everything by my bootstraps, all by myself, and really look at it and really heal it all alone. There have been people who've helped me and there's, there's been people who've significantly helped me. If you're watching this, you know who you are and I'm grateful. Regardless of how things have gone, but there is a point which you reach where you really cannot have anyone else solve it for you. Just making sure we're still rolling. I used to have a lot of issues with the camera going out, but you know, it's weird. Ever since I got rid of a lot of my anxiety, it doesn't seem to happen anymore. It's not weird, but you know, I'm just saying that. I think it makes perfect sense. You wouldn't realize how your energy, your magnetic field affects technology around you. <laughs> I'll walk in the room sometimes, and when I suddenly like have a revelation of some kind, the lights will flicker. It happens all the time. Anyway, uh,
there's a point that you reach when you realize no one can do it for you and nobody can tell you what you need to hear and even though it actually seems harder and it seems worse at least at first to go alone hermit mode go inside and heal actually you become stronger that way you become stronger by having to face it all alone and have no one to try to talk you out of your demons there's no one there to save you they'll get worse they will but it has to get worse before it can get better and that's where you become tested by spirit are you going to fly or crumble when the devil comes when the demons come to torment you and there's something that happens to there's stages in a seeker's life in a spiritual seeker's life whatever you want to call yourselves there's many different terms chosen ones earth angels spiritual people people on the path sometimes people just call themselves empaths psychics warriors seekers I think I've hit all the major ones. Awakened ones. I don't care for all the terminology. You know, all it does is add religion to something that is actually just what it is, right? Whatever the hell you want to call yourself. Seekers go through stages. And there's a stage that you enter where you become lit, your vibrations high frequently, and you start to see signs everywhere. Everything becomes a sign. Everything becomes a synchronicity. All the numbers, oh my god, they're overwhelming. I must have seen a very specific number today about 278 times, and I'm, it's literally to the point where I want to scream when I see it. Like, I'm sick of seeing it, right? <laughs> I'm sick of seeing it. When this stage happens, it's because you're waking up, but there's a danger. There's a danger that you get your mind to involve, and for a while you do see signs and they do make sense and you do see things and, and it does all add up until it doesn't work anymore. Then what happens is you start to see too much stuff and it's almost like your, your vision, your inner vision, right? Your third eye, whatever you want to call that, your gnosis, your inner eye. It becomes so clogged up with information, you actually become bombarded by symbols and outside imagery and thoughts that are actually not yours and that are actually just random information. Sometimes, not just random, but like non-local interference. That's a term that I get a lot. It's non-local interference. Sometimes I get stuff about the world. I see pictures of tanks in Ukraine right now. I'm not involved in that, but because I'm a human and I'm part of the collective human race, that's what I get. I get random imagery of war, tanks, guns, all this stuff, right? I get clogged up with all this information. And what I've begun to realize is that a lot of this, these numbers and everything that we see, it can become very distracting. It actually is not so helpful. It's a distraction. Getting so caught up and this is a sign and this is a sign, this means this. The more wrapped up you get in thinking about it, latching on to this imagery, you actually are wasting your energy and your mind will use it to deceive you. The interesting thing is that the mind becomes more powerful as you become more powerful, but it also becomes more unruly unless you know how to master your own mind. Mastering your own mind is probably like a big, big, it's not... I want to say the majority of the spiritual work. Dominating your own mind, taking back your power. Your mind will become more powerful and it will attack you more. It will have more darkness in it. The more powerful you become, the more you rise, the more you get attacked, not less, until you get to the point where you know how to protect yourself and you transcend it all. If I were at that point, I'd be able to, be able to tell you more about that point. Although. It's sort of like this. You're walking along and it's just like people are just throwing these nuts at you. Like, boom, 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 boom. And you've kind of got this like shield of defense around you. And it's like little ripples. When you get hit by a nut, there's like these little ripples that emanate. And it kind of bothers you. It's an annoyance, but then they just bounce off. Or it's like a bunch of mosquitoes buzzing around you and they go, dip, 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 but they can't get through. 
that's kind of the point that you reach, but the issue lies when your auric field, your energetic field, your electromagnetic field, your energy, I just like to call it energy, when that becomes full of holes or the layers of defense start to lower, then these things get through. And when they do get through, the more powerful of a psychic, healer, spiritual person you are, intuitive reader. I lay down a lot of different words so that you can find the one that latches on to your understanding so that we can get to the actual truth instead of the label and the term itself. Big point. You have to hear the message and hear the intent of the speaker. The intuitive message and understanding that the speaker is trying to convey, not the words that they're using, not the labels, not the terminology. We don't need all that. That's why all the religions and all the religious books, all the texts point to the same message. You have to look at the message. You have to look at the moon and not the finger pointing at the moon. Don't look at, don't look at me, don't look at the finger. You look at me all you want. <laughs> find the moon, find the message in this. That's where we begin to find real understanding, the resonance, what resonates with you. Many different paths that all lead to the same place or they lead nowhere. Maybe that's the same thing. <laughs> Hello. Man, spiders love to pop out of the woodwork whenever I'm doing anything creative. Often when I'm doing something kind of frightening, which to me, this is me really opening up being quite vulnerable. So, you know, hello. I, I'll take that as a good sign. <laughs> oh, man. You're a pretty one. Do not kill spiders. Do not kill spiders. Either leave them alone or put them outside. People who kill spiders enrage me. And I, I was taught this. I was taught to kill spiders when I was young, to be afraid of them, to be anxious about them. And guess what? We have, in, we're in the state I'm in, we have spiders literally everywhere, okay? This, this state is actually full of wildlife. <laughs> As a friend of me pointed out, they were shocked. And this friend is actually from Australia. They were shocked to discover that in, in, in this state we have literally wildlife everywhere. I mean, we got bats at night, which is really fucking cool. But yeah, there's spiders everywhere. Um, I mean, there's squirrels everywhere, birds everywhere, storks, cranes, geese. Oh my God, there are so many geese. There's like a hundred geese sometimes in the middle of the road and they just stand around. And there was, <laughs> I lived in a town once where they actually put out an edict to kill half the geese in the city. And some people were really upset and some people were like, yeah, do it. That's horrendous, man. Look, imagine if you were a spider in the middle of your room. No, imagine you're a spider and you don't know what the hell's going on. You're just outside living your life. You're trying to get laid or you're trying to eat, right? You're, you're hungry, you're starving, you're just trying to get your needs met, you know? I mean, this is, the, you're a primal physical being, you know? You're just hungry. And you wander into this dark den, you know? It's no longer rainy. Hmm, I wonder what's in here. You're just trying to eat, you're just trying to get by. And then this massive, giant alien, that, oh my God, comes at you. And just for virtue of existing where you shouldn't be, you're not hurting anybody. You don't care, right? This giant just comes at you with a fly swatter and just and murders you. How would you feel? Well, you'd be dead. <laughs> How would you feel if these giants are just trying to bat you out of the sky for no reason? I've had nightmares about this, by the way. I've had flying dreams. So actually, I know how it feels. It's terrifying. It's like, why don't you just fuck off? These are... These are just beings trying to get by, live their lives. Oh, hello. <laughs> I said, fuck off, and he ran away. <laughs> they're, just, they're just trying to do their thing. Like, you know? They're just like us. How are you any different than the spider on the ground? How are you any different? We're no different, him and I. It's just a matter of size. He just came in here. He doesn't know any better. He's trying to eat. He's probably starving because, you know, as a spider, I imagine he'd be starving. You know, just like a white male in America. You're starving. And 
you know, he's been doomed now to be in this garage where I don't know if he's gonna really find what he's looking for in here. <laughs> he may, he may find, I mean, you know, there's probably some bugs in here that he can get to, but, or she, right? I would imagine, well, no, these, no, spiders have gender, especially wolf spiders. Wolf spiders are so cool, man. Anyway, don't kill them. They're these beautiful, majestic beasts. They build these beautiful webs. They are the artists of the animal kingdom. Yes, they're vicious predators, but they, they're beautiful. Just really take the time to sit down and observe one and observe a spider. Look at them closely in detail. I would put them in my hand and show you right now, but I don't think they'd appreciate that. Here's the thing. Ever since I learned to be fascinated with spiders and stop murdering them, I have never been bitten by a spider since. Ever. And I think for the last 15 years, I have never, ever been bitten by a spider. They leave me alone. They never get on me. They sure do. They sure do seem to love me, though. <laughs> As, I, as you can see, but uh, they never they never attacked me. I, when I was a young kid, I used to have wolf spiders literally run at me. Like they attack me. I'm this huge, like 10 year old kid, right? And they would rush at me. These are predators, okay? They don't do that anymore because I'm not afraid of them. I don't, I don't have anxiety with them. I don't show them I have ill intent toward them so they don't attack me. You see how that works? You see how that works? When you have bad intentions towards someone, they feel that. When you put out bad energy toward people, they feel it. Especially if you and this person are intimately connected by some sort of soul tie or soul bond. Oh my God. They're going to feel that. And especially if you're a spiritual person or an empath, you're probably a projector too. You see powerful spiritually powerful people we're just energy workers and we're more tapped into our abilities we're more in tune with it we have less shit in the way so as much as you receive i don't think people realize if you're a highly intuitive effective empath whatever psychic intuitive you're going to be a powerful projector as well there's lots of people on this planet that are powerful projectors and have no spiritual awareness whatsoever actually they're not aware of it, though. That's, that's what a spiritual attack is half the time. It's an unintentional attack by somebody who's not aware of what they're doing. If you're sitting there and seething over someone, and like writing about them, and making a big deal about them, and like, oh man, I can't believe they did that. Oh, fuck him. I, that person will feel that energy, and then they'll start thinking about you, and then it goes back and forth. It oscillates, and in very, very extreme cases, although... In my experience, this has happened several times to me, so I know. It's not even extreme. It's actually not that hard to do, I guess. But especially, it's, it's happened to me with people I'm really connected with. You can create a thought form out of that. A thought form is nothing more than an energetic construct. But the more you feed it, it can begin to take on a life of its own. And that's what becomes essentially a demon. It's a thought form. It's a... It's an energy being. That's all it is. They can start to gain their own awareness. And then what they do is they start to mentally torment their creators. Wittingly or unwittingly. Consequently or inconsequently. If you create it with intention, then it might do what you want for a while. But if you keep feeding it, eventually, like an angry child, it'll get upset that you are literally enslaving it and it'll turn against you. If you unwittingly create it, it's going to be chaotic. It's not going to have any set direction or goal. And who's it going to come back to feed on for energy? It's going to come back to its creator, the person who created it, even if they did it unintentionally. So it's very important, especially as a spiritual person, to recognize the power that your words and energy have. Every single word you say has power behind it, right? It's not always great to be really caught up in saying the exact specific thing that you need to say, but you need to be careful if you're caught in some sort of thought loop or energy loop about somebody because they will feel it. That becomes a psychic attack. And if you're a powerful receiver, you're probably a powerful projector and you don't realize it. It's really easy to project. It's not even difficult. People just think it's difficult. When you get out of your own way, we realize how powerful we really are and how powerful our words and energy really are. Simply having ill intent towards someone 
it can it can cause everyone in the room to be angry. If you're if, if you're like if you're like me, if you are this highly I've I've seen a whole room respond to moods I've been in if it, if it's really powerful. And I've seen it happen with other people too. I know what can happen. All it takes to be the receiver of a spiritual attack or a psychic attack is simply somebody being really mad at you and they can't let it go. And there's, you know, if they're sitting there seething over it, that's a psychic, I'll create a psychic attack. So especially if you're in a relationship with someone, if you have some kind of close bond with somebody, it's important to look at this and realize what energy am I sending them right now? You know, how am I feeling about them right now? The best thing you can do is cut it off, go within and direct your anger towards something else. Not to them. You can still have the anger. That's important. Don't repress anything. But use the anger. Feel it. You know? Redirect it somehow. Go do something productive. Go to the gym. Go exercise. Go for a run. Go for a walk. And the spider is literally walking across the floor right now next to me. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, now he's running. There we go. He's running now. He's running now. Go, go do something with this energy. Go do something creative, you know? If you really, really have to write some scathing poem, but for, for God's sake, like, put it away and, and, and just leave it alone and let it go, you know? The best thing you can do is let it go because if you're in this state of seething, you just keep attracting more of it and it just becomes a vicious cycle and you end up eating yourself alive or creating a thought form that will torment you as you're eating yourself alive. By the way, I'm going to make some more videos on thought forms. I think it's important. I've already made a few, but uh, these things can be mistaken for various mental disorders. They can even cause them, or they can exacerbate existing disorders. <laughs> so if you're, for example, a rape trauma victim, these, kind, these mental constructs will prey on those. They'll specifically prey on your triggers, too. They're here to push your buttons. That's actually how they get in. That's how... Any kind of psychic attack or psychic invader gets an in is by pushing your buttons. So the more, so whenever your buttons get triggered, your triggers are actually the key to healing. Your trauma triggers are actually your signs for what you need to heal and where you're weakest, where you're at your weakest, your most vulnerable. And I, I don't like using the word vulnerable because it usually to me has a positive connotation of opening up, but where you are most insecure. You know, the weak link in the chain is as strong as the chain's going to be because if it has, or like the example I used earlier with the shield you have around you and people are throwing stuff at you, if you have a big hole in your shield, somebody throws a tomato, boom, that, then, then what's going to happen? Imagine that there's like a army and they're all fighting a dragon, which I don't know why you want to fight a dragon. I love dragons. You know, leave the dragons alone. They're cool. But anyway, you know, the king and all his army wants to fight the dragon and they're all, ah, they're worried, yeah, and spraying fire everywhere. It's picking knights up and throwing them around. What do we do? We, we, there's no way to defeat the dragon. Wait, wait. And I see a chink of vulnerability in his armor. And that's, it's the wound from 85 million years ago when it was pierced by Sir Brosric Ronan, the, 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 the great slayer. And, you know, okay, aim at that spot. And, oh, now he killed the dragon, right? Because that was the weak point in his armor. They used his vulnerability against him, his wound, which is a terrible thing to do, but that's what predators do, just like narcissists. And after a lifetime of trauma and abuse, which I've sold myself short on and acted like it didn't happen and always thought that everyone else's pain was worse than mine, maybe you can relate. I've decided that it's time to take these things that I know and these stories that I have and use them to help people who have this too, who have been through this, or people who are going through something right now. Here comes the spider right toward me. Hello. You may have similar wounds. You may have gone through similar experiences. Can't fear the spider. You gotta look the spider dead in the eye and trust that it's here to guide you. It's 
not here to hurt you. You gotta be bold. <laughs> get, get away from me. Get away from me, buddy. Yeah, okay. A little too close for comfort. Jesus. No, thank you. <laughs> there he goes. I put him on camera, but I feel like that'd be disrespectful without his permission. I'm, I'm serious, too. <laughs> I feel like he wouldn't like that. He didn't ask to be in here anyway. I don't know. There's a lot of people out there who have been through pain and they've sold themselves short on their pain. You think that your pain doesn't matter. You think, especially, especially a lot of men, you have a hard time opening up. We are taught to be invulnerable. We're taught to be soldiers. We have to be warriors. We have to keep all of our pain inside, keep our emotions inside, sternness. Play games, be little boys, immaturity. Be players. Nonsense. That's not the kind of man I want to be. That's not the kind of people I want to see. Right. That's not the kind of men that I want to see in the world. We need to be real. We need to be open. We need to be vulnerable. And we need women who love us for who we are emotions, vulnerabilities, insecurities, and all. The real man inside. Not what we can provide. Not what's in our wallet. Not what your job is. Not whether you have a car or your own place. No. Who are you? Who's your character? Do you love? Are you compassionate? Do you cry? I'll tell you, some of the times in my life when I've had the most attention from women, not that that matters, but I will use this as an example, People have opened up to me and really come is when I'm on the verge of tears for some reason because I'm open, my heart's open, I'm being vulnerable, I mean raw. That's when people seem to want my attention. Whenever I'm really pissed off, today I was pissed off, you can tell, I'm already on the edge. I was pissed off today and suddenly everybody's like smiling at me, saying hi to me. This happens anyway sometimes, I get a lot of attention, I do. The, the, the hotter you burn your light, the more it shines and everyone, people are attracted to that. Just like people, who, I'm attracted to people who have that, I am. It's that, that emotion, realness, genuineness, authenticity, but we're afraid of it. Just like the spider, we're afraid of the spider. I don't know where he went, he could be crawling up my ass right now. <laughs> we're afraid of the spider. Because, because real. Why are we even afraid? See, that's the point. Why are we afraid of the spider? Because we were taught to be afraid of the spider. There's no reason to fear a spider. They're small. They don't care about you. They're just trying to eat. We were taught to be afraid. Fear is installed and programmed. But that doesn't make it real. The mind viruses put on us, put in us by other people, put in us by our rapists and our tormentors and our assaulters, or just people who are well-meaning but maybe not even ill-intentioned. They didn't know any better. They did it by mistake. Generational curses lined up from people who, through unresolved trauma, laid down their burdens to bear upon us. There's no reason to fear the spider. You know why spiders bite people? Because we're afraid of them. You know why dogs attack people? Because those people are harboring something. Some kind of ill intent, some kind of negativity. Something that needs to be resolved. Something seething inside of them that the dog feels because dogs are empaths. <laughs> Animals are, all, all animals are energetic beings. They're all empaths. Humans are the only people that don't seem to be in touch with our empathic nature. We're the idiots. We're the fools, truly. We think, because we're human beings and we're primates, we think that we are the 
master race. And we think because we have language that we're smarter than animals are. Animals know almost more than we do half the time. The spider's communicating with me. It may not be using words, but it's feeling me. <laughs> and it's here to teach me. I'm not going to kill that spider. That's, this spider is my guide, my guardian. It's here to teach me something. Here to teach me not to be afraid. We're taught to be afraid. We're taught to be afraid of expressing ourselves. We're taught to be afraid to speak. We're taught to be afraid to speak our truth. We're taught to be afraid, whether you're a man or a woman, but especially as men, we're taught to hide and repress and bury our emotions. Hell, everyone now, everyone, men, women, it doesn't matter anymore, right? Right? Every, everyone is non-binary, non-gender, and men are women now, and women are men, and you, you can be whatever you want now. It doesn't matter. We're all, this is the point, we're all the same. We're all the same on the inside. We're all this beautiful colors of the rainbow, multicolored rainbows, each one of us. We're unique, differentiated, individual. We have our own pains and traumas, but we all have the same fears. We all have the same pain. We're all taught to be afraid of the same things without just cause. We all have the same emotions, the same experiences. But because this spider looks the way it does, because it has fangs the way it does because we've been taught that it bites we fear it we think that we have to destroy and kill that which we fear to sacrifice what we fear people who tell the truth we hate the truth so we we sacrifice the people who try to tell us the truth because we don't want to leave our comfort zone we don't want to leave our box we fear the truth so we kill people who tell the truth we fear spiders because we were taught to fear spiders. Because they look different than us. Because we know that they have the power to bite. Just like someone who tells the truth, they can bite us. They can hurt us. The spider could bite me right now. I'm afraid of that. Fine. I don't have to be afraid of it though. You know what I have to do? Hey, we're not gonna bite each other, okay? I'll let you live in peace. You let me live in peace, okay? Okay, we're good now. Communication. We hate that which we fear, so we try to put things in boxes. We put ourselves in boxes and we slap ourselves full of labels and red gauze, red tape, I mean. We have red eyes because of our trauma, because of our anxieties, lies. But just like this spider on the ground. Wherever he went, wherever she went. Afraid of. We're creative, divine beings in our own right. Taught to be afraid of being who we really are, what we really are. And these people who came along and tried to steer us the wrong way. Maybe they did it intentionally. Maybe they did it just because they had their own pain too. It's really why most people do anything is because they were taught that they just feel their pain. And so they enact their pain on us. They tell us, they project onto us their problems. We can call them narcissists, but really we all have narcissism within us. We're all mirrors for each other. We're all the same. Projecting pain, denying pain, denying trauma that leaves its roots deep. Roots. Leaves the mental scars, 
the energetic scars, beaten and bruised. become afraid. That's when we hear the voices in our head shouting at us who to be, what to do, what rules to follow, what we can and can't say, what emotions we can and cannot express. It tries to tell us who and what we are. Our mind, the things we hear, the thoughts we hear. When I say voices, I mean any of the shit that happens in here because it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. All these things you see, all the symbols, all the imagery, the things we fantasize about, things we imagine that never happen, all the things we fear that never happen and never come to pass. It's all a fugazi. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. We step out on a limb and we really be vulnerable. We're opening up the gateway to intimacy. And when we open up the gateway to intimacy, that's when we are our most fragile. And that is when the forces, the mental forces, demonic forces, whatever you want to call them, these voices, these fears, these insecurities bombard you and they come at your mind. They try to steal away our light and steal away our truth. This can be the foundation of multiple various mental disorders, but really it's just fear. Just like this spider. We fear her, but she's our teacher here to guide us to what is real. Instead of what is fake. Out of denial. And into our light. Our fear shows us where we need healing. When we talk about the ego, this is what we talk about. We're talking about our fear, the mind, the thing that tries to take back control and shut down our truth and what we have to say, who we really are. We're afraid. We're afraid of what people will think. What will they say? What, what judgments will they make about? What assumptions will they make? Because we make so many judgments and assumptions about ourselves. Our fears, our insecurities. But when you look at another person with real love, none of that matters. You don't see that. We don't love ourselves and we judge ourselves so harshly because, because we're taught that. Because we just need to learn to love ourselves. When you look at another and how beautiful they are with all their flaws and their quirks and their fears and their insecurities, you say, I don't see all that, babe. I see who you really are. I see your light. I see your power and creativity. I see your beautiful eyes, your mellifluous voice. You're a real person just like me. And it's okay to be flawed and fragile and vulnerable for a while. It's okay to not be a perfect queen and have it all together. Have the crown on her head. Take that goddamn crown off, man. Take the crown off. Look at the spider and don't be afraid. Spiders. Spiders are masters of art. They're the master craftsmen, the artists of the world animal kingdom 
but they bite. But they only bite out of self-defense when we fear them. We roll over them in our sleep. And we hate them when they bite. They're just like us. Artists are feared and misunderstood in society. Because artists are the prophets, the soothsayers, the saints, or the doomsayers, depending on the message in 